Hey guys, welcome back to Wyma 40k Rogue Trader. Uh, let's take a look at our level ups. Uh, I took Poise to Strike because I wasn't sh I wasn't sure about. I don't think Dance Macabre would be helpful, and I don't think Fainting Attack was really anything I wanted. Although it does, I think it does force them out of cover, which could be fine, but that's, I'm, I think we can just hit them. If I have sight of them, I'll just use Killing Edge to hit them. So I just took Poise to Strike because I wanted to check it out. And then I also took Perception. Uh, for Elliot, I gave her a Raid so that she gets uh, half the bonuses if an ally attacks a target marked as prey and gave her some ballistic skill so that she could uh, hit a bit more often not sure if she needs it but just put her up to 80 and then from now on I'll probably boost agility if I can if not I'll boost perception uh, with J I went with stronghold stratagem just for a, a bit of defensiveness uh, there have been a couple of times where I've been where I've been uh, some of my guys have been one shot so this should help a bit and then took fellowship I gave claim the bounty to uh, Pascal He's starting to do quite a bit of damage with his nice plasma rifle so that should be helpful and I gave him perception Cassia gave her a warp curse unleashed that should help her a little bit because I think I think she does warp damage with all her skills I'm actually not entirely sure so correct, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments and then I gave her fellowship because I couldn't boost her willpower I think she's maxed out on willpower and with Abelard I gave him Bulwa because I think his main threat is going to be range attacks, so this should be helpful. Especially now that he, he's, I can't remember which skill it was, but many of his uh, first moves in, a, in combat uh, don't cost any AP anymore, so yeah, that should be helpful. And then I gave him strength. Don't think weapon skill is really necessary, although we could boost that a bit. Probably want to get that to 80 and then go back to boosting strength. So that's something we can do a little bit later on. But that's it for for um, level ups. So now let's go have a chat with Nomos. Nomos here. What do you want to talk about? Hmm. What have you been doing, Nomos? Nothing. Okay. You read the data bank. Recognize that no must understand, realize, comprehend themselves. Oh, okay, so, alright, hang on. You read the data bank recovered from Theodora's cache, and then you said the incident marked the beginning of Nomos. What did you mean by that? Yes, Nomos, remember, we, you brought us data sustenance and it contained a name, Epitaph. I remember this. We recognize that, no, not, not, not like that. In that name, we recognize the place where Nomos originate. Nomos suddenly falls silent. Symbols race chaotically across the screens of the huge cogitator, and you hear an almost human groan come from the depths of the machine. Nomos understand, realize, comprehend themselves, okay? For a moment, there is silence broken only by the moans of the huge machine, and then the cyber gargoyle begins to speak, and with it, the other servitors chosen by Nomos. We have analyzed the data with with which you sated us and we have recreated the sequence of events. First there was Epitaph. It is a world but it is merely a case, a container for something we cannot name and cannot understand. Theodora and this ship have been to that place. Something was lifted up from the world, a gift. A trusted priest in Crimson, one who identified himself as Amanat, comprehended the gift raised from Epitaph and from it he created what the data banks list as a tech light. But that is not how Nomos come into being. 
We were not invented. We were not freed. We came into being by accident. The chorus of servitors sounds genuinely confused, almost desperate. Theodora's ambition, the myriad mechanisms of the huge ship, Amanat's mind, the inquisitive attempts to comprehend and extract the dormant blight, the dormant epitaph, what lies hidden in its depths, and between it all we slipped in, connected and emerged like an electrical discharge between poles. Accident, incident, that is what we are. We have no purpose, no history, no more just are. Do you know where this epitaph is? That data is gone, deleted, erased, uh, deliberately, but we cannot trace who did it or why. A tech flight? A gift but a terrible one. You would call it a weapon. Theodora coveted it. She needed it desperately, but we do not know why. Uh, how is Amanat involved in this? He desired knowledge. Theodora allowed him to explore the gifts of Epitaph, slaking his thirst, but we know it did not bring him happiness. In the footprints of his slaked thirst, fear followed. The blessed Amanat was involved in the birth of the spirit named Nomos. I do not believe for a moment that he could have been frightened by this miracle. It was not us he feared. He did not know us, but only suspected. His mental processes were occupied by the tech blight. That was what he feared. He wanted protection from it. The ship was an epitaph. Amanat traveled aboard it, investigating the tech blight, and Nomos was born as a result of an incident. So how was it possible that no one in the crew knew the whole truth? The truth was hidden, deliberately. Your officers' memories were stolen. All the cogitators' memory banks were wiped. It took you feeding us the truth bit by bit for us to piece it together and understand. Who has the resources, the knowledge, and the power to accomplish such a feat? It would have been beyond the capabilities of the Blessed Almanac himself, and he would never destroy knowledge. This story disturbs me. It sounds like an echo of the sacrilege whose name is the preservation of ignorance. The spirit of Nomos must be protected from the encroachments of that power that tried to conceal the truth of its birth. Enough about the past, let us talk about the future. You do in fact have a purpose, Nomos. Then tell us, what is our purpose? Uh, to serve the light and truth and greatness that is the Imperium. To simply live comprehending yourself and the world. Life does not need a purpose to justify itself. To be my servant, my blade, a force to be reckoned with. Well, uh, let's go for the first one. To serve the light, to serve the Imperium. The chorus of servitors dutifully repeats your words, but seemingly without understanding them. But Nomos is preoccupied. The huge cogitator continues to sing its creaking song, running unknown calculations. Blessed be this spirit. A great path and a great future lie before it, and we must assist it on its way. Okay. The saga of gargoyle's gaze tracks you as you walk away from the quadrant. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Ah. Uh. What was it? I can't remember the name of the quest anymore. Solus. Rat hunting. Air of the homunculus. The door. Outcast duty. Machine spirit keeper. Okay. Yeah, I don't even remember which... Okay, never mind. Well, we've done that quest then. Alright, so... Uh, I guess the next thing we need to do is... Yeah, Cassia, and then the rumor of... Siege of Euphrates, Fall of Santiel. Okay. So Santiel's Pride, we need to do that too. Okay, so let's head over to deal with Cassia's uh, quest now. So 
Let's head out. Okay, Lord Captain. The Astra Pass are reporting a new message. It says Lord Inquisitor Kalkazai is sending his regards to your lordship and is hoping to meet you in his palace at full four at your earliest convenience. Uh, then let us set course for full four. This must be very important. Okay. All right, so. Ooh, Smaragdus Mundos. Okay, so there's another system there. I don't think there's any other systems here, so that's fine. So, let's go to Footfall, and on our way back, we'll go to Aviorus, and then we'll try and get to Smaragdus Mundos too. Okay, so we have a plan of attack. Let's go to Langrin's Belt. Right. Silence of Mercedric. Uh, there was a malfunction in the engineering chamber during the warp journey. The accelerator cogitators stopped obeying the tech priests, and for a few precious moments, the ancient machines were left to their own devices. The crew managed to avoid serious breakdowns or accidents. Several acolytes of the cult mechanicus were turned into servitors as penance, and the bosun gave out several triple watches to the voidsmen who dredged up the old rumors about the cursed ship. Okay. That's fine. Let's head down to Furibundus. Okay. Alright, let's head in then. Head to footfall. Uh, atrium. No, we don't need the era. We want Elliot. Actually, since we're meeting the Inquisitor, do we want to bring Heinrichs? Uh, maybe not. Heinrichs isn't really a fan of our choices, so let's go with Elliot. Okay. The Hieronymus, Zeta, okay. Let's head over here then. Judging by their injuries, the aristocrats were subjected to a long, hardy beating before execution. I think I'm allowed to go in. Alice is presently closed to outsiders. I'm going in. Because so I have an actual invite. Okay. Lord Inquisitor is, en is engrossed in studying star system charts and reports, which are amassed on the desk like the ridges of a formidable mountain range. There are shadows beneath his eyes which are ruthlessly dissecting the latest report, and his skin seems stretched taut over the bones of his skull. Without turning his head to you, Kalkazar says we'll wearily, Greetings, your lordship. Your timing is impeccable. Okay, this is interesting. An aged servant with the bearing of a veteran approaches the two of you. In a precise movement, he replaces the untouched cup of cold recaf in front of the Lord Inquisitor with a new one slightly steamed. Uh, may the Emperor grant you strength and some time to rest, Lord Inquisitor. The corners of Kalkazar's mouth creep. Upward, in a befittingly grave tone, he replies, I would be loath to trouble our master with a prayer for such an indulgence. 
especially one so utterly inappropriate at this fraught time. Lady Navigator Cassia Tisiphia Evriela. The Lord Inquisitor's lips curve into a thin smile as he catches a glimpse of scarlet eyes. I hear that House Ocelio is going through a difficult time. Change is coming. I sincerely hope it is for the better. Your colours, Lord Inquisitor, are as rich as they are multifaceted. I've never encountered anything like it before. Unclouded hues flowing from one to the next. Amazing harmony. Amazing and frightening. Cassia raises her chin and nods demurely. That a man of such status and talents has taken an interest in the well-being of a novice nobility house is a great honour. Jay touches the Aquila on her chest and drops her head in an unnecessarily deep bow. O oh Lord Inquisitor, smiting spear of the Imperium, with the gold of faith cutting through the nebula of the Corona Six. Alcazar raises a hand in warning. If I were you, Mistress Heydari, I would endeavour not to draw the Inquisition's attention to my person. A Mercatum Tabula Official can do many things. Reattaching a head to a body is not one of them. Uh, what is the current situation in the Expanse? The Cult of the Final Dawn and Drakari Raiders are vying with each other to see who can cause us the greatest turmoil. I have mobilized all the forces I can to repel the attacks, which is why we are still alive. Combined militia brigades are hunting for Xenos and guarding convoys and expeditionary platoons under my command are crushing heretic rebellion. The situation is unstable, but I will not pretend that I was prepared for this crisis. However, we have not lost our footing yet. Uh, what has prompted the Drakari to act so brazenly? Prisoner interrogations indicate that a relatively major political upheaval has taken place in Comora. The Cabal of the Reaving Tempest has lost its grip on authority and become a target for enemies and rivals. Many vassals and members of the Cabal decided that fleeing to real space was preferable to waiting in Comora to be killed. Why has the Cult of the Final Dawn become more active? The warp is raging, the baleful signs always portends change and crisis beget desperation. The most fertile ground for heresy. I believe the arch enemy servants think their time has come, or perhaps this day was marked in their profane scripture as the date of the end of existence. I will not trouble myself with further attempts to make sense of their blasphemous doctrine. They are bent on destroying us all and they so they must be destroyed. Okay, what makes you think you are capable of commanding the whole sector? Do you see a better candidate for the job? The Lord Inquisitor closes his eyes wearily for a moment. I may no longer be in the first flush of youth, but believe me when I say there are many things I would much rather be doing than playing constable of, to the Corona's expense. But alas, every ruler in our sector chooses to confine their concern to the well-being of their own holdings, where I alone must take care of all. You have mobilized all forces, but not House Von Valencius? Are you not standing before me now? While your status remained unclear, I prefer not to requisition the resources of the Von Valencius Protectorate. Your people dealt with Urulon the Cruel's agents and with Xenos raids, and that was enough for me. But now is the time to add your might and talents to the scales. But you must have an ingenious plan to save the Expanse. The glance tossed at you is like a shot from an auto pistol at point blank range. If such a plan were to exist, information about it would be of the utmost secrecy. I suggest you focus on the current strategy of putting out each fire as you encounter it. I understand. I see no need to get bogged down in deta the details. To apprise you of all the information I currently possess would require more time than we have. Okay. I escaped from Comra where I was held captive by Xenos. The Inquisitor raises an eyebrow in press. You escaped from the Dark City? A feat that few have accomplished. Truly, I congratulate congratulate you on an exceptional performance, and I won't even mar your triumph by telling you that the Inquisition will, of course, be watching you very closely henceforth. I sincerely hope that your grand escape was not part of the Xenos' devious machinations. Yet, I am surprised that this Xenos is still alive. What is it, your lordship? Sentimentality, revenge, cold calculation. Alcazar gives Elliot a long, significant look. 
If you do not finish her off yourself, send word when you are tired of her. My acolytes will be only too eager to learn her secrets. Clenching her jaw to the point of pain, Iliot hisses Eldari curses under her breath but retreats a half step. I have looked into the eyes of death and of creatures far more dangerous than you, Monkey. Do not try to frighten me. One of your acolytes, Emelina, accused you of co cooperating with Xenos. I would remind you that the particularities of the Inquisition's work lie far beyond a rogue trader's purview, but given the circumstances, yes, Acolyte Lichtenhart's words are true. It has been several years since I established contact with the Drakari. They informed me of upcoming raids and I thwarted them. I kept the expanse safe while the Xenos were absorbed in their internal squabbles, which are of little interest to me. Strictly speaking, one might regard my actions in this situation as unorthodox at the very least. In reality, however, they are undoubtedly beneficial. Acolyte Lichtenhart has demonstrated her inability to surmount the bounds of convention, and had she been in my position, the Expanse would have likely already fallen under the blows of the present crisis. Fortunately for you, she's not, and the Drakari drained by their power struggles and bereft of their best raiders, can do nothing more than run from my fleets. Your Lordship, I hope it goes without saying that I would appreciate you not spreading dangerous and misleading rumours going forward and keeping the content of this conversation private. Given the current state of affairs, I would have to treat such actions as subversive, so I thank you in advance for your considerate silence. What was the dispute between you and Caligos Winterscale about? His Lordship deemed it more important to show off his stubbornness than to safeguard the interests of the Expanse. Stupidity of the most burdensome kind, but my sources inform me that he nevertheless has joined my efforts against the Xenos, and so I've decided to stay any sanctions for a time. Uh, why do you think he acted that way? His lordship has long displayed a susceptibility to corrupting ideas. His loss of interest in managing his protectorate and his appetite for violence drew my notice some time ago. After a moment hesitation... Calcazar adds, the only question that remains unanswered is how many agents of the arch enemy have infiltrated his entourage. Did you even try to discuss it with him, or did you immediately set incendiar on him? Despite the impression I may have created, I am not a schoolmaster obliged to rein in misbehaving rogue traders. Caligos rejected the call to fulfill his duty to the emperor. What discussion was there to be had? Caligos was under the influence of the ruinous powers, but I put an end to it. How curious, when all this is over, I will certainly call you as a witness at Caligos's trial. Together we will decide how best to handle him while ensuring the safety of the expense. Are you aware of the changes Incendia has wrought on footfall? Naturally, her ladyship has done me an invaluable service by taking on the task of instilling order on the station. Though her style of leadership seems unnecessarily brutal to me, on the whole her actions have not exceeded the bounds I set. If you think she is unnecessarily brutal, why have you not intervened? Firstly, I entrusted the task to her ladyship, and she is executing it competently, and secondly, stewed. Are you unaware of what I am striving to do here? At present, I am trying to prevent the deaths of billions, yet you ask me why I am choosing not to save hundreds. I put an end to a dictatorship. As I understand, this was a private confrontation between two rogue traders, yes? As such, I hope your house will reach a reconciliation with her ladyship's heir. You have not hindered my plans. Lady Incendia purged footfall sufficiently that I was not distracted by the need to pacify. What help do you want from me? Frosher, if you please, the Inquisitor nods imperiously at the servant who draws some kind of remote control from his pocket. All sound, sounds whose sources are more than three meters away fade to nothing. Okay, what's going to happen? To my chagrin, the ability to be in two places at once does not number among my talents. That is why I wish for you to serve in my stead. I place such trust in very few people, you understand. You will feel what it is to walk in my shoes and attempt to compel a gaggle of quarrelsome blockheads to work together. You will reconquer Euphrates too for me. The Inquisitor gestures to the servant and the silencing field disperses. 
Crusher. Another recap. This one has gone cold. Okay, so we're going to Euphrates now to deal with the Adeptus Mechanicus issues, I suppose. Pascal jerks his head up, clearly recognizing the name Kalka Sar had just uttered. Abelard stifles a grunt with displeasure, his mutter pitched for your ears only. You will reconquer Euphrates too for me. The esteemed Lord Inquisitor has done away with all pretense and politeness now. His orders no longer come with even the veneer of a request. You see your valet or another Inquisition assassin? Why can't both be true? Frosher has been a member of my retinue for 50 Terran years and the person in my entourage who comes closest to being my confidant. Something akin to a warm smile touches the Inquisitor's lip. We have had cause to be involved in many incidents whose reports have since been marked with a seal of silence. Frosher nods deferentially and on his aged, jowled face appears an expression caught between eternal loyalty, motherly affection and religious devotion. Can you tell me more about Euphrates too? The sacred world of the Adeptus Mechanicus off limits to lay people. I am one of the few who do not worship the Omnissiah to have set foot on its surface. Or rather, I was. Now it is crawling with unbelievers. The despicable word bearers attacked and captured Euphrates II and the cult of the final dawn brought an entire horde of heretics to the planet. Registering a Sanctity Alpha priority mission, the scourge of corrupted misbelievers reigning over blessed workshops fills the Omnicide's faithful with anguish. Activating auto-asceticism protocol, I offer a prayer for the liberation of the sacred world. From beneath Pascal's crimson robe comes the sound of mechanisms whirring to life and dark bloodstains streak across the fabric. I sent my troops to aid the explorative forces laying siege to the world, but uh rift occurred among the commanders they need an authoritative general and you are perfect for the role my confidence is not misplaced i trust what matter first brought you to euphrates too out of interest an utterly transparent attempt to learn secret intelligence i offer to make you my general and you try to pump me for information poorly done the word bearers went there themselves they didn't just send in their puppets Clearly, the stakes for them are high enough. Urulon the Cruel has stirred his profane self to make a personal appearance on Euphrates too. Conrad Voitfeer, incidentally, is also there. I hear you two have unfinished business. Him, I will generously leave to you. When you are finished with him, you may simply dispose of his mortal remains. No need to surrender them to the Inquisition for an inquest. Consider it my gift. What do they want with Euphrates too? The reasons behind their machinations would be pure speculation at this point. Bring me prisoners to interrogate and perhaps we will gain some much needed insight. What forces do we have in place and what is this rift that occurred between the commanders? Explorative Fleet Divine Cognizance 7821 recalled its most combat ready units to retake the world. They were supported by my most powerful strike fleet and a group of deadlier allies. I dispatched a pack of space wolves to hunt down the transgressors. Unfortunately, the leaders have failed to find a common language. The esteemed Thorbald is at odds with the conclave of the Mechanicus's battle congregation, and the Omnissiah's servants find Thorbald's strident nature off-putting, and neither group is fond of militant Sibilek, who commands my forces. We're not fond, to be precise. We're not fond, to be precise. The esteemed militant perished along with his ship a week ago when his noble allies failed to support his offensive. Okay, that doesn't sound very good. How did you manage to enlist the aid of Angels of the Emperor? I must remind you that I'm still Lord Inquisitor of the Coronas Expanse, not merely some... What do you always say, Frosh? Some crocs bothering prick. If certain rogue traders at times allow themselves to speak to me in an overly willful manner, that should not give you cause to doubt my authority. Situation is clear. You will be given the details when you arrive in orbit around Euphrates too. Uh, to what do I owe such an honour? To whom else could I entrust this mission? No need to feign ignorance, Von Valencius. We both know the shortcomings of the other candidates for this position. At present in the expanse, there are two people with the perspective and steady hand required to control this situation, and they are both standing in this room. So if you will, dispense with the humble road trader act and win this war for me. I will smash the heretics. 
I never doubted you, your lordship. The Emperor protects. Okay. Alcazar nods at the paper that his servant has deferentially delivered to the table. This document attests to the extraordinary powers you now have at your disposal. I'm counting on your success, Stooge. Okay. The siege. The forces besieging Euphrates too are divided and will remain that way as long as their commanders are at odds. The Lord Inquisitor wants the rogue trader to take charge of planning the upcoming planetary assault. Emperor's palm. Okay. This is actually really interesting. I wonder how things play out if you go for the heretic oh, path. This mastercrafted patella augment. Uh, let's is see. Not fit for we a are servitor. now at level four, so we're fanatic. Okay. Votary is three. Okay. Above thunder and guns, the rogue trader and two random allies start combat with temp wounds equal to their own resolve. Okay. In the first round of every combat, the Rogue Trader and their allies gain 2 plus Rogue Trader's Iconoclast rank additional MP. Not bad. Uh, the Rogue Trader and their allies need 30 less momentum to activate a Heroic Act. That's actually really good. And, okay, so transcend the potential is fanatic. Okay, that's pretty good. The target ally may immediately use their heroic act without spending momentum. Very interesting. So we've got that. What's that level five? Any attacks from allies that may hit other allies will be dodged if possible. Any allied ability that may target an ally and has a resistance test will be resisted by allies. Uh, okay, anti-friendly fire. That's not bad. Okay. Alright, so I guess we're heading back out. So, um, yeah. Okay. Alright, so. Let's head back to our ship now. Okay, and we're out in the uh, Coronas Expanse map. I'm going to just cut out all the travel because there were no events happening in between leaving the palace and getting onto the, uh, to the ship exploration. So let's first go to Aviorus to check out the Prima. So let's do that. Uh, during the warp voyage, the middle decks reported strange gatherings that were attracting dozens of officers. An investigation quickly bore fruit. One of the acolytes from the Augur deck has proclaimed himself a prophet and is rambling about purification by blessed fire. Only the perilous influence of the warp can explain the strange convictions and uncanny zeal of this person. Uh, put the cult under surveillance. Spiders reported that the cult gatherings were hardly worth investigating. They were nothing but long conversations punctuated by people searing their palms over an open flame. The surveillance was maintained until the end of the warp journey, after which the newly born prophet simply forgot about his calling, stopped giving sermons, and dismissed his congregation. Alright. Okay, so let's head in. Alright, so I think we've explored everything. Well, all the planets anyway, yep. Yeah. Explored, explored, so let's save it here and investigate the hulk. Let's see what we find in here. Okay, drifting void ship. Okay. Uh, I guess we can head in there. Uh, yep. Let's take this party in.
Is this the Forge Fiend one? Yeah, I think it was. Okay. I've never wondered so much before. Yep, okay, well. That's fine. Okay. Hmm. What was the rumor that I wanted to check out now? Close and discovery. Inevitable triumph. Ship called the Inevitable Triumph went missing on course for football. A shuttle from that ship has been discovered not far from the... Oh, I think this is actually... Yeah, okay, so we have done this one. All right, never mind. Ooh, we have some trophies. Okay. Okay, so we're back out in this bonus uh, expanse map. Uh, let's go back to Furibunda so we can go to Telecos Epsilon. Alright. Uh, so I guess that rumor was just one that I already explored and they just never took it away, so that, that's that. Okay. Let's go to Colony Management. Lord Captain, the Auto Xenos punitive unit led by Acolyte Lynette Shea has arrived on Janus. The Inquisition, Inquisition forces have already taken control of the Governor's Palace and intend to deal with the anomalies on Janus. Heinrichs, why was I not notified of their arrival in advance? I'm surprised that they have informed us of their arrival at all. It demonstrates a semblance of trust. Okay, how much did the Inquisition sniff out? The initial interrogations have set Lynette Shre on the tracks of the wretches toward the anomalous region, but her people continue to dig deeper, so to speak. Okay. Hexagramic grace. Ten logic, ten coercion, ten persuasion. Okay. Profit factor minus one. That's not good. Oh, we'll lose one in everything. That's not good. What think you, my officers and advisors? Cooperating with the Inquisition would do us more good than trying to hide the current misfortunes of the colony. I can send them a message to keep us informed about their interrogation as a favour. If only we could throw them a bone and let them find the evidence they want, one that we can get by without. The rest could be concealed away from the Inquisitive eyes like a sand lizard shedding its tail. Sometimes one must cede the battle to win the war. If someone were to walk around my domain so brazenly, they would certainly regret it. Lay open the trap, lace it with poison, put down the bait, and wait for the enemy to end their own worthless life. Uh, don't benefit from that at all. We get hexagramic grace. Uh, I don't want to lose all of that, so... Let's just let the Inquisition do their job. To serve Janus and the Von Valencius dynasty. After Lady Shi had set up uh, her headquarters at the Governor's Palace, she began to investigate the situa situation on Janus. All those feeling guilt for their crimes before the Emperor could only stay silent and pray. During her investigation, Lady Shi has been able to establish that the genetic changes in the organisms of the sickly creatures have been caused by the effects of Mysterious substances secreted into the water by Xeno obelisks. These substances did not contaminate the water until recently, as shown by the analysis of the Magos biologists. The same Xeno obelisks appear to be linked by a chain of energy communications, also serving as sources of unknown radiation that seem to have caused the outbreak of contaminated growth in the currently uncontrolled sector of the planet. This also seems to be causing the appearance of the mysterious phantoms. Lady Shu suggested that there is some sort of ancient mechanical construction located on Janus that had awakened from its slumber, and the anomalies occurring on Janus have been caused by the blasphemous machines trying to start itself. Okay, great fire completed. And we've got these trophies, cool. Alright, now... Uh, the following project must be completed in the project protector of light bringers. Okay. 
pleasure world. Watcher from above, profit factor. Mm hmm. Okay. We also need light bringers. Secrets of the winter scales. I don't know what that does. What are these light bringers? Okay. Hmm, not sure about that. But, okay. Uh, pleasure world, I think. Yeah, I think we were going to do this one, so that's fine. Janus's orbit is swarming with a fleet of refugees. By welcoming the aristocrats among them on the planet and turning it into a resort, the rogue trader will gain favor in the higher circles. So let's do this and get the profit factor. Okay. Dargonus, Viabos, Kiava Gamma. So they all, we all need to, we have to go to those places actually. Alright, well then. In that case. Okay, let's do that first then, since we're here. Let's go to be a boss. And let's visit. Okay. Uh, let's save it here quickly. Okay. The Chartist Guild started a tariff war with the Protectorate. Trade and logistics on this world are suffering. Okay. We lose profit factor. Strike a military blow at the Guild. Along the tariff war. So we lose two profit factor, we don't want that. We lose three efficiency, we don't want that. Strike a military blow at the guild. The defeat of the guild did not yield any trophies, but trade was resumed in full, okay? All right, now, what do we want to do here? Voice of Paduvian, two-handed melee weapon, okay? Drusian security, don't have enough Reputation with the Drusians. Profit factor plus seven. The rogue trader gains ten in fellowship and willpower. Project must be completed in the colony. Penal battalion, Xenos Intoxicant. Where is Xenos? What are these things where supposedly we have to have extra stuff? Maybe this is something that we need to keep an eye out later on. Penal battalion, security for colonies, hit with macro cannons, raider base, freedom and vengeance. We don't really need for now. We need more fellowship of the void reputation for this. So let's do penal battalion, plus three securities for all colonies. If you want to do this one, that's the one we need to get. Okay. All right. And now... Mundus Valencius, deadly. Hmm. Ah. Uh, Let's save it for now. Let's go to Telecos Epsilon. And now we go to Mundus Valencius. Save it again. Let's see what is happening on Dargonus. feud has broken out between two influential admirals of the Imperial Navy. 
having already led to armed skirmishes and even outright battles, calling to attention a favor he once did for House von Valencius. One of the admirals has appealed to the rogue traders' colony for support. Security plus two. Provide him with materials for ships repairs. Deny him help. Security plus four. This is a weird quest. Why would Imperial Navy admirals break out into a feud that will affect things? This is odd. I find it odd anyway. Security. Security. Deny him help. I want the profit factor. Four profit factor gain. The squabble between the admirals soon ended in the death of the weaker. The victor did not forget the rogue trader's re refusal to help his rival and has sent generous gifts. Okay. Ooh, if we... Oh, this one is lose one profit factor. Okay, we can't do that, obviously, but... That could have been nice. Root cost. Okay. Profit factor complacency. Five to bonus to all their skills. That's pretty good, actually. All right, now, what do we want here? Dargonus. Ah, oh, this is the one that needs security, complacency, and efficiency. So we need complacency now. Uh, let's see. We want oilless garb. Not really. Librarium. Kasbala Commission. We lose profit factor. We do gain efficiency and security for all colonies, though. So that's something. Scholar Progenium blocks that. Imperial Navy. We get a lot of stuff and we get Woebringer. Scholar Progenium. And we want Bastion. So we've got pure blood. Hmm. Okay, so this must be stuff from a different from different um, colonies within the our whole protectorate. So we need security, complacency, and missionaries must be completed. Missionaries? What? Which one does missionaries have? Let's see. Uh, anyway, hang on. I think what I'll do is do all that stuff off camera. For now, let's go back to the Corona Six Pants. Because uh, that's going to take a bit of time to get through. Crossroads of a Hundred Dreams. There's a direct connection that way. Okay. Uh, Orcelia Prophecy, Empress Palm. Okay, we can get directly to Krana. So let's do that. And let's visit. Okay, let's go to Kiava Gamma. Save it first. Okay. Drakari Raid targets the planet and drags away thousands of people aboard their vessels. Ignore their calls for help. That's not good. I don't want to do that. Enter battle. Okay. Let's see. It's only two ships, so there's that. Still can't use Empire and Storm, that's annoying. Uh, vulnerability scan on the Talon Siren Frigate. Perfect. Okay. Can we hit? We can. But I want to hit with this thing, so. Let's go here. Ooh. Okay. Alright, 
nice. Ooh, good hit, good hit. Let's go that side, that side. Okay, let's go like this. do have a frigate okay so we get the frigate to get another frigate as we go that's nice to know okay so let's go here decent hit and let's turn now and use this mm -mm. not great damage but damage so let's do it's facing that way what happens if we change that it's three damage and it's going the opposite direction that's fine i think that worked out nicely beautiful Got a couple of hits in. He's got to turn around. Alright, he turns that way. That's alright. He might get a couple of plot shots off at us. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's see. Do that. This should be some really good damage. Yes. Okay. Well then. In that case. Hmm. Not quite. So this time we need to go there. Hmm. Shift to probably a bit too dangerous, I think. So uh, Yeah, let's just go here. That's fine. See how our frigate does. Not good, basically. Oh, the torpedoes couldn't quite hit it. That's nice. Now let's see what the frigate's going to do. Okay, more torpedoes. Radio. go all the way around this way then. I think this set of torpedo torpedoes has too large of a turning circle or anything. Okay. So let's do a shallow jump forwards. Okay. Shift twice over, two spots over, and let's just attack them. Okay, not quite. Alright. Didn't destroy it. They got hit. 
they're going to get hit again. Alright, fine, we survived. Okay, that's good. Okay, more trophies. Alright, let's go upgrade then. Alright. All hands on deck. Flagship torpedoes. Okay, maximum overdrive. Flagship's speed is increased by two and its maneuverability is increased by one. The vo bonus damage dealt by void ship ram based on distance traveled is 100%. Focused efforts allows the use of both abilities of one selected post for one turn. While moving, the flag flagship may make its next turn at 90 degrees instead of the usual 45. It's actually pretty good, I think. Reinforce shields. Shield pulse overloads the shields to disrupt the enemy's defenses. If the enemy has shields, they are moved to the opposite side from where the attack hits. If the enemy has a hollow field, it loses several of its charges. The pulse can also negatively impact Xenos technology. This overload expends 25% of the flagship's shields. Uh, focused efforts is that yeah let's take new heading i think new heading was useful for us okay uh, focused efforts just in case we need to use both of them so that should be good all right close whoa hey okay. this is why all right so J can go there, Master Cannoneer. Uh, Elliot, I guess, maybe. Master of Etherics. Isn't Elliot doing something else? No, it's not. Shield Master, Abelard, Warp Channeler. Or warp. And Idira. Okay. Alrighty then, forgot to put those up. Requirements, use 100 scrap, use current ability once, hull integrity, no damage. Hmm, okay. Shallow jump. We can upgrade these abilities too. New heading. I have no abilities on shield master somehow. Okay. Torpedo control. Focus efforts. Okay. Very interesting. Let's hull repair then. Okay. Let's see. Can't do that. Can't do that one. We can do this one. Let's do it. All right. Use the ability once. Reinforce shields. Wow, that's a bit weird. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why this doesn't have any skills, but... Alright. It is what it is. Okay. Let's save it here, and let's check out Kiava Gamma again. Is that done? It's done. Okay. Alrighty then. In that case, let's head to the Coronas Expanse again. And let's just jump to Telecos Epsilon. And I think this is probably a good place to end the episode because in the next episode, I think we're going to go to Orcelia Prophecy and deal with Cassia's quest and then after that we'll head over here to Emperor's Palm and take uh, retake the Euphrates 2 planet uh, I think this is a yeah this is a good place to stop we talked to the Inquisitor we've um, dealt with some colony stuff and we're about to deal with Cassia's uh, personal quest so 
Uh, that should be interesting. And yeah, I think it should be fun to tie up the quest. There's only two more. The other one is Marriage Rise quest after. Oh, Cassia intends to recreate this. So we have to go to Smaragdus Mundos. Okay. Through Orcelia Prophecy. Okay. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll continue in the next episode.